Okay, guys. Uh, right, I've um, I've only got a couple of days to go, and uh, I made um, an appointment to see Billy. I've had to make the appointment because tr going to his bad each time, he's never bloody there. <laughs> so I'm going to review. Um, well, I read his book he gave me, Fish and Testicles. Wrong way round, I know, but. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of his um, life story in a way, but with a bit of fun in it. Uh, he's a great writer, Billy. Uh, fantastic. So I'm hoping to try and gleam a few little bits of him. Um, so uh, and he's also given me another book. He's just popped up for some fags at the moment, but <laughs> he's given me a book. Um, Tits and teeth. So, uh, it's my birthday today, so I had of these. It's my birthday present, so uh, there you go. So it should be fun. I'm with Dennis as well. Back uh, again. Back again. Oh, there he is. Talk of the devil. Here he is. And I built. Hello, me. <laughs> nice to see you again. Nice to see me again as well. <laughs> yeah, on camera. Okay, well, uh, as I said, um, uh, it's about a week or so ago that uh, I, I re-met Billy, I haven't seen him for a year, and we had a good old chat. And we had a little bit of an interview, which you probably all know on the last one, uh, which went down well. So I thought, I'd, uh, before I go back, come and have another uh, word with Billy. And what I want to do, uh, and I'm sure the readers would like it, is to know a little bit more about uh, his book, uh, Fishing and Testicles. It's a fantastic read. So. Uh, I would advise uh, anyone if uh, they, you know to buy it from Amazon. Amazon, yes, I think. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. yeah. All right. Okay. All right, Billy. Um, okay. I'm gonna be gonna like you. Oh yeah, we can. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, right, Bill. Right. What I'd like to know, Bill. I know you've never done a, a life story as such, but I, I'm very intrigued because I used to know you. Uh, or read about you many years ago when I was a young lad and uh, I think we're about the same age but you had successes obviously uh, on one side of the country while I was from uh, uh, down in Wales which obviously is a different country but uh, even so um, I tell you what intrigued me about your book is that you did jump from uh, from the present to the past all the way through the book which mm -hmm. I found very interesting but I, I, I I put in a chronological order where there are some questions I'd like to ask you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, you mentioned about your dad. Uh -huh. was, your, was your dad a big influence to you when you were a youngster? Because I, you know... Well, I know. yeah, I'm not, you have to excuse my voice, I'm a bit croaky. I've, got, uh, yeah. I've had man flu. Man flu, I know you've got... Which <laughs> women don't understand, but it's far <laughs> worse than childbirth. It, it is. really yeah, is, you know, is. I know. <laughs> well, women just don't understand that. No, that's so right. I'm yeah. still a bit croaky. Hang on a moment. <laughs> yeah, I've got to get some refreshments. A bit of lubrication. Anyway. <laughs> um, I kind of wrote the thing... Um, it's not an autobiography or anything. No, no. It's sort of a life story, a journey through a, yeah. life, a life of fishing. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't plan anything at all in the book. No, okay, so you just... And yeah. it's just one story would lead on to a memory of maybe 20 years oh, later. Right, so, do, so yeah, yeah. I would jump on to that. So, yeah. <laughs> as far as the chronology is concerned, it's whatever came to mind when I was typing <laughs> okay. it, you see. Yeah, so um, that, I mean, I've got to be honest, I was interested, because I've never read a book quite like that. So, no, I so, probably you know, not. <laughs> you certainly, yeah, because, you know, you started off, obviously, when you were young, uh, very much like an autobiography, and you mentioned uh, the Bridgewater Canal, and oh, your yes. dad taking you on your on your lap and all that. And Used to have a three reader. That was interesting. A proper Del Boy, yeah. Oh, yeah, proper Del Boy. Well, well, well. Most of my early fishing was on the back of a Lambretta. Right, oh, Lambretta. Freezing yeah. my fishing and testicles off, you would <laughs> yeah. not believe. No, I could imagine, yeah. You've yeah. never been cold till you've sat on the back of a Lambretta in winter <laughs> for 40, 50 miles. You Bloody know. hell. Yeah, go in there and coming back. Oh, like, terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. So, but, so your dad was a bit of an influence because he, he started well, you fishing, did he? Or? Well, yeah, so I was looking so much that I am, unlike all the contemporaries of my mm. age, mm. those kids who started off with a cane on a you know, a, a bent thing with cotton. Yeah, that's right. That's the same I thing, tended yeah. to get my dad's cast off tackle. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. as he was a match fisherman, the cast off tackle was pretty yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the, the one thing that keeps you interested as a kid, of course, is catching fish. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. And so 
he, he told me how to catch fish, he gave me the tackle to catch fish, but mm. as I got more and more into match fishing, I think mm. Benny Ash just became a, a, a bigger influence. All oh, right, okay, I'm with you. And uh, yeah, we yeah. used to go around Benny's. Benny was mm. one of the two top anglers in Britain, if not the world at the time, you know, yeah. the other one being um, Billy Lane. Billy, yeah. And uh, we'd go around every Friday night, collect the maggots mm. for the... Not for that weekend, believe it or not, but for the weekend after that. Oh, right, OK. So we've got a week to turn them into casters. Oh, I see, yeah. Because yeah, you, yeah. you couldn't buy casters in those days. No, no, you, had to make, you had to do your own. And uh, he always invited us around into his kitchen for a cup of tea, and um, he sort of treated me as almost a surrogate son. Oh, so I, I, I learned a tremendous amount. By the time I was 13 or 14, mm -hmm. I tapped into sort of half a lifetime of fishing I was going to that, say, that yeah. Benny would, would yeah. give me. What, well, what would it take me 20 years to learn? Yeah. I picked up on a, a Friday evening over the course of a couple of years, you see. Well, you know, you were obviously very, very fortunate because you talk about two of the, the, the legends of, of, of angling here, you know, and uh, to have a head start like that it must have been fantastic. Well, yeah. you know, I, I arrived from Match Fishing Magazine now, yeah. and I, I've done that a little bit more uh, chronologically. Yeah. And I, I've gone through Benny, but another mentor I had who gave me a tremendous amount of information was Ivan Marks. Ivan, oh, yeah, right, okay. Yeah, so You were saying about Ivan Marks as well? Yes, yeah. when I moved down to the Midlands, mm -hmm. completely different kind of fishing altogether, particularly bream fishing. Right. And uh, okay. Ivan sat behind me one day at. Um, mm -hmm. At Attenborough Gravels, yeah, yeah. when I was in way, way over my head. Um, yeah, yeah. I'd never caught four pound bream, I had no tackle, no knowledge whatsoever. And, okay. And I even sat behind me for three hours and I got 20 years of experience yeah. in my head in in three hours from Ivan. Bloody fantastic. So, you know, I, I, I almost came out and accomplished bream because I learned so much yeah, in yeah. three hours. So. I, very, very lucky, Dave. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you were to say, I, Billy Lane and Benny Ash was for the best anglers of their era. Yeah. The next era along, Ivan was the best angler he was, yeah. in the country, if not the world at the time. Yeah. So I've had two of the world's top yeah, anglers yeah. teaching me, you know, yeah. so. Well, I'm I, I was very, very lucky. I was fortunate enough to meet uh, Ivan, and uh, you know, um, he gave me great praise like when I won the world championship. Oh, yes. You know, uh, uh, called me the Welsh wizard for a while, <laughs> but uh, he, 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 good friend. You know, I got to come very oh, friend with him, uh, and we used to see him in Ireland. But um, I want to talk to you a little bit because uh, I know when you were young, before you uh, you actually lived in Lee, I think it was, wasn't it? Lee, most of Lee, yeah, yes. mostly Lee, and then yeah. you moved. But what what year was it when you moved up to? Uh, uh, the Midlands, would you say? Well, I left. Yeah. I escaped the North escaped. West <laughs> escaped, yeah. by joining the army. Oh, I see. Ah, that's the question I was going to ask you then, because uh, yes. reading your book, you mentioned about your grammar school. Obviously, that's why you could write so well. <laughs> but secondly, uh, I wondered how you jumped from grammar school to your, to the British gas and then the army. Uh, how did that work out? Well, I, I left grammar school. I went to university, yeah. then yeah. Manchester University. Yeah. Uh, university from okay. the degree I then moved. Moved, I then signed up for the army. Right. Okay. So I, was, I was offered a commission with the uh, with the artillery. Yeah. And uh, after the interview, I realised that my Lancashire accent did not fit in with the officer class. No, of course not. You don't, hey, you... Bargo, my neck, you thumb, they yeah, me. you don't speak with the plumber oh, in your mouth. No, no, no. Some hillbilly. <laughs> so I, I decided just join the ranks anyway, I'd get away yeah. from Lancashire, and um, okay. all my contemporaries in the uh, in the training camp yeah. got Northern Ireland. Yeah, yeah. And I was just so unlucky. I got Singapore. <laughs> Well, not lucky or bad luck. Wow, that was good luck. Better <laughs> you look at it. <laughs> oh, yeah. fair enough, yeah. And, and then I noticed you went to the British Gas then, was it after you left the army? I worked at British Gas for a year yeah. or two. Yeah, because there were some interesting stories there. You used to go to work to sleep or something, weren't you? <laughs> More or less. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> well, you know, it was so unionised at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any form of work was instant dismissal. You, you just <laughs> weren't allowed to work. That was brilliant, that was. And well, then from there I went. Yeah. 
I've, actually, I've just written the, the piece about it for our match fishing this, okay. this week. This oh, right. Okay. Uh, from there, I got the phone call one day yeah. from Jerry Woodcock. Yes, yeah, I remember. Jerry. wanted to yeah, make yeah. my floats, and mm. I've now told the story of them going, oh. working with Jerry. Yeah. Um, oh, right, okay. Uh, and the float manufacturing them. Going into building my own business. Yeah, yeah. Making. Okay. Well, I was going to come. I was, I was going to come on to all that in a minute, Phil. Okay. But before we get on to there, um, I, I, I was found interesting because you're a bit of a ladies' man, really. And you, oh. You've always bloody have been. Oh, very dare you. <laughs> but in fact, uh, you made me laugh when your mum threatened you. You go blind if you. <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> She's a threat, you just go blind if you... It was only four, though. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, it's not to put anyone off, is it, you know? Was it my fault? It was a girl next door. <laughs> yeah, don't go near a woman, you go blind. Oh, I love that, for fair dues. But um, your mum and dad obviously passed away. When did they go... Build, build, my mum passed yeah. away about, about four years ago oh, when I was oh, over here. Oh, sorry. Oh, my dad sorry. Yeah. would be about 20 years ago. Oh, right, okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, it's, it's nice to know these things, you, you know, where you come from and, uh, you know, like, we, we, my, uh, my family, my parents never went fishing. So okay. I, I had to learn, you know, obviously uh, from people who were in the fishing club, if you like. But as right. you say, you, you had a great start. Great oh, start. just a little yeah, bit, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, sorry, we, we just digress then. We were talking about this other book, uh, Tits and Teeth, which uh, we're going to have a little chat about in a minute. But uh, what I want to do is get back to uh, the, the beginning of uh, Billy Making. And um, uh, I noticed that um, after the army, you uh, uh, and you entered the British gas. So when did the fisheries come into play? When did you decide you thought you'd um, have a fishery? You know, how did that all materialise? Well, I always thought, one way or another, there was a way of making a living, a living out of fishing, other than a fishing tackle shop or breeding maggots. OK, yeah, yeah. But it was finding the little niche. And while I was there, I had nothing to do for a number of years, mm -hmm. apart from chairs to secretaries around the office. <laughs> and I used to draw plans for a fishery that I, I thought, in the future, I'm, I'm going to build this. Mm, mm. And the only thing missing, of course, was money. Yeah, but you had the insight, that's brilliant. Yeah, and so uh, what happened then? No money, so... Well, no money. Then I went into the floor game. I started earning a hell of a lot of money. Did you? On, right. On the canal, canal grace that oh, Jerry yes. did. Yeah, it's very popular. Uh, I did a yeah. couple of uh, pro-celebrity series for TV. OK. Then I did a TV the advert. Right, right. Um, with the write-up I did on that. That was what I so, so that's how the quid. Never. Bloody. So that's um, how the money started coming in then? Oh, I couldn't really? believe it. I was still yeah. earning money at British Gas. Yeah, yeah. A uh, nice expensive car for sitting there doing book roll or going fishing <laughs> or pretending I was doing something, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I went in with, with Jerry Woodcock and yeah. from there when things went a little bit sour, yeah. set up my own floor making business. You did, okay. Yeah. Learned a little bit about business itself, yeah, which was yeah. important. And from there, moved on to the fishery. So how did you come about the fishery? Did you see a fishery for sale or what, 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 what was the story well, about? Well, I, I was driving all around the county. I was yeah. looking for a ready-made lake and yeah. um, I saw this house, mm. beautiful house. And I wanted to move up at yeah. the time. Yeah. And about half a mile from the house, I saw this sort of glisten in the distance. Mm -hmm. There was a lake that had been dug. All oh, right. Big lake. Yeah. And I went to see the farmer, and I, I rented the lake off him. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning. And, and that uh, was it. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. And then... I'd, I'd already decided that certain things that nobody perhaps thought of before. Yeah. Um, I realised that the hardiest fish, and the one people liked to catch more than anything else, mm. were carp. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but yeah. they were so rare. Yeah, they so were, yeah, yeah, yeah. I stopped it with carp. In them days, and yeah, then, carp was a, a rarity. Very rare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I thought, let's try barbly soaks. Mm. And let's get rid of keep nets. Okay. So I wasn't oh. just the first person to, to really... No. To the a commercial fishery. Yeah. I was the one who ran keep nets, ran barbed oaks. Right. And then I started experimenting, I started with golden orf, chub, 
barbled, got a hell of a lot of criticism. Yeah. But all these things were new and unheard of. Yeah, of course, yeah. You, you, and, fair to say then, you must have one of the first commercial fisheries. It was the first it, commercial, was yes. It, and I always thought it was um, the Midlands, but it was how you no, always said, right? Before, no. well, 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 and then hmm. it was so popular, I then moved along, yeah. got built more lakes. I eventually bought the lakes from the farmer. Right. Then I, I, in our village, there was a drunken lady. Yeah. <laughs> almost titled. She thought she was, but she had a country manor. Yeah. And she'd inherited all this land. And uh, she liked to, oh, she liked to whiskey. Whiskey, okay, yeah. And uh, yeah. every few years, she ran out of money. <laughs> so I used to go along, buy a piece of land off, and put some more lakes there. And I finished up with 18 lakes and Lem five stock ponds, yeah. all out of... Red wine was it or whiskey? Famous <laughs> gross. You oh, know, yeah. famous gross. That's what she drunk well, about two bottles a day. <laughs> she rapidly ran out of money, so I kept helping her out. Ah, well, well, that's fantastic. That was a fantastic story, that.